sort of gave rise to the idea for the story machine was I was um, visiting a school, talking to uh, a class, and they were I was uh, asking the kids who here write stories, and pretty much nobody put their hand up. And by the end of the lesson, all these boys, boys in particular, were coming up, um, showing me all the comic strips they'd drawn. I said, well, these are stories just because they don't have any words. Um, doesn't mean to say they're not stories. Um, so I really like the idea that you could tell a story with pictures and um, that kind of sat in my head as, a, as an author and illustrator. You, you're a bit of a collector. You're always kind of on the lookout for things. So um, it sat in my head. Um, and then I woke up, it was something like three o'clock in, in the morning um, and I had this image uh, of a boy sat as a typewriter, a bit like um, the character from Peanuts who um, sits at the piano and plays all day. Um, but I had that idea of a, of a boy sat as a typewriter, but he wasn't writing words, he was making pictures. Um, so I lay there sort of writing the story in my head for about three or four hours. And then when it was, when it was complete, I went back to sleep and then woke up, remembered it, thankfully, um, and wrote it down. I sent it to my agent, I think, the next day. Um, and she sent it to a publisher. Um, and within, the, by the end of the day, they'd sort of made an offer on it. It was really, really quick. It was kind of, it, it was such a kind of brilliant way. I thought all books were made like this. I would dream them up, send them away, and then people would make offers hours, hours later. It's not always quite that simple. Um, in terms of building up a book, they all happen slightly differently. Um, for this one, I remember I printed out the story, uh, cut each sentence, each line up, and started moving around on blank pieces of paper, um, and then start to develop the sketches from there, um, to work with the text. Um, sometimes the sketches work on their own. Um, in an ideal world, the, the, the words make a story on their own, and the pictures make a story on their own. It's, it's trying to get them to work together that's, that's the tricky part. Um, from there, it's, 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 um, it's a little bit like um, casting a play or making a film. You, you have to get the right character. Once you've cast the right character or drawn the right character, then you have to build the world around them. Um, and that's, that's the real fun part, is the kind of experimenting and, and seeing what works and what doesn't work. Uh, the relationship between the words and the images is a really interesting one. I, a lot of kids ask me, do you prefer illustration or do you prefer writing or what comes first? It, I really can't. They, they sort of both happen at the same time. So um, it's not a question of... Um, I think about the words, then I think about the pictures. You know, I'm thinking writing down the words, but the pictures are kind of in my head. Um, I tend to sort of write down a very quick idea first, so I, I sort of very broad brush strokes, um, half a paragraph, this is the story, this is basically what happens, and then build it up from there. Then once you have the story, then you break it down from spread to spread. Um, and then you sort of, then you can start to fill the world with characters and drawings, but you know, as far as the drawings go, they're already drawn in my head, so that, um, they're already there. It's not a question of rights. How, do, how does this book look now on paper? It's already imagined. Um, but yeah, they, they both pretty much happen at the same time. You're always trying to make the best book you can because it's, it's forever. It's something that can't be changed. So you agonise. Particularly, I think people think picture books are quite easy to write because they, they only have four or five hundred words. But to to get that connection, to tell a story, to have uh, an ending, to feel kind of fully satisfied in such few words is really hard. I find it, it's easier to write chapter books with 30,000 words than it is to write something with 500 words. Um, but for the story machine, it was, it was, it was pretty straightforward. I ended up getting a load of, uh, buying a load of old paper books from, um, a charity shop using those as backgrounds because it was a sort of world made of typewriters and paper so uh, building it up like that um, and then yeah it's sort of back and forth it didn't take long at all there was some changing and there's some tweaking obviously uh, the hardest thing was kind of building up this world that I, I'd got a typewriter an old typewriter and, and start messing around and trying to draw with the typewriter and trying to build up 
pictures with the typewriter. That was the kind of hardest part, making that work, but not making it too messy. I wanted the book to be clean because it's quite sparse. So it's, it's, you know, trying to think about all these things at once. The key for me to getting into drawing uh, was, was that, um, was being interested in what I wanted to draw. And I think to get the key to get kids writing uh, is finding what they're interested in. And if you have a classroom full of children, then that's obviously difficult uh, to get everything individually. I mean, I sometimes go in and talk and get uh, kids to help me design a character, to help me kind of build a world. Okay, let's design a superhero. Let's have a superhero who's who's got unusual powers, nothing you've seen before. And then you, you start to get the ball rolling, you start to get kind of ideas being fired up. Um, and if you give kids a kind of a sort of rough structure to work to and get them to kind of fill in the blanks, get them to kind of put their input into it, I think it's really a really good way. So rather than kind of go, OK, I want you to write a story. This happens, this happens. And then tell me the ending, you know, just give them a very something very loose, um, get them excited, get them fired up and then see where they go with it. Uh, you don't have to be brilliant re a reader, a brilliant uh, writing, brilliant at spelling in order to be an author. It's about having an idea, it's about having a voice, about having something to say. I think it's really an important message to send to kids, particularly boys, I think, um, who, who don't always tend to gravitate towards writing. Um, but look, looking back on the text, uh, yeah, I mean, there's always always things you can you would maybe change um but most mostly i i, I think it's it still stands stands up <laughs>